Everybody knows the best JRPG ever created is Dog's Life. There's a dog poo in the woods. But the second best is Persona 5. Persona 5 is one of my favourite games of all time, which is why I wanted to recreate everybody's favourite mechanic, Day Progression. Yep. Now, I know you're wondering, Jack, why something so boring? There's only so much gameplay you can develop before you need to start worrying about, well, everything else. The main thing I wanted to avoid was writing test project code and actually write well-structured and organized code because it's really easy to fall into the default, just get it working mindset. Can we get on with the bloody video? No need for that, you floppy rubber pig. Using a reference clip, I was able to loosely replicate the UI as much as I could without getting a degree in graphics design and dragging this out by another three years. The dates here are temporary. We don't need to worry about what they actually say until we're actually using the UI. Animating each element was a similar process as making it. I created two timelines, one for the dates dropping down and another for transitioning to a new day. It's usually best practice to animate UI via code or an API such as Dootween due to the performance overhead that the animation system creates for UI elements, but for the purpose of this type of scene, it's not really a problem. There's two different things happening in this scene, the actual progressing logic and the animation stuff. So I created two classes, a day progressor and a director. Like I mentioned before, it doesn't matter what the dates say before we even see it, because when the scene starts, each element is updated to display the date range we want, the previous date, the next date, and the surrounding ranges of dates respectively. And yes, being speechless is very normal. This is the most advanced example of procedural generation you have ever seen. You're welcome. Since I've already created two timelines for this scene's animations, in the director class all I need to do is switch out the timeline assets at the right time and kickstart the entire process on a single method call. And with that, we're basically done. There's a bit more to it than that, but not necessarily to do with the logic of this scene, but for the next one. It's extremely common for games to be busy loading while pretending they're not. Let me explain. During Persona 5's day progression screen, the game is sneakily loading the next scene at the same time. So it only made sense that I did the same. First things first, I thought about how I'd want to interact with this class. It makes sense to simply call a method when you want to load a new scene, while passing the scene build index of the scene you want to load. Making the caller of this method do anything more than asking scene to load is possibly outside the scope of the calling class. I made two load types, automatic and manual. The former begins loading the scene and transition progress straight away, whereas the latter loads the given scene in the background and waits until it's told to activate, useful for loading screens or just hiding the process of loading altogether. If you were to rip off the pants of this system, you'd realise it's just a wrapper around Unity's scene manager methods but it's the logic surrounding those methods that make it cool. Usually a simple call to scene manager load scene is enough, however, there's a reason why I can't use that. I've put the scene loader object in its own scene. I could use don't destroy on load to prevent destroying objects between scenes, but I created a base scene to be home to all the important systems that should always be around, and a scene loader, well, that sounds pretty important to me. Since we're working with persistent scenes, calling scene manager load scene is just going to end up unloading all the open scenes, meaning our base scene will go with it. Making this method call additive means that the scene will be loaded alongside any current scenes, leaving the persistent scene to continue lurking in the shadows as it watches your every single move. But now we need to handle the unloading of the previous scene ourselves. Load order is important and can change depending on the type of loading you want. 
For automatic, we want to unload the previous scene first before loading the new one in order to keep the memory footprint of the game managed, otherwise we could face limitation problems. The way manual loading works isn't quite the same because we want to load the scene before the next one's even displayed and we could do that in a loading screen where the scene's really small or we could be doing that during a big scene that's already there. So it's on to whoever's calling that method to be smart about when they're loading manually. Finally, no scene loader is complete without transitions to mask the scene swapping. It's only a basic transition such as cut to black or fading, but that's all I really needed. All that was left was to remove any unnecessary test rubbish left over, and with that, it was done. Persona 5. a lot of steps for something so small, but it's worth it in the end. Actually saving the day can be done with not that much more effort. I just didn't do it here because I don't have a saving system, but maybe that's something for next time. I'm really happy with how it turned out. The official art is basically stolen, but the logic and code is mine. More specifically, I'm proud of the structure of the code since I took the time and effort to avoid writing Abandoned test project number 672 spaghetti code. And since it's clean and actually reusable, I might actually use it or adapt it in the future. Bet you never thought you'd watch a video about loading screens before. If you enjoyed the video, or maybe even learned something, subscribe for more games, games dev, and all things Dark Dax. Consider even following me over on Twitter or Twitch to join in on the fun in real time. I've been your host, Dark Dax. You have been staring at me for the past seven minutes. And this is the end screen.